Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes My name is Jason Newland And my Facebook group is Jason Newland's Boring Group. It's a treasure trove of Facebook. I don't know. It's, it's a group. You can join if you like. I've got 191 people, members now. I reckon I should reach 195 by Christmas. Yeah. What I thought I would do today is focusing on the future. I'm going to talk about focusing on the future or maybe have a title, you do have a future or look forward to the future. And I've been thinking about just it's 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 I'm stuttering here. It, 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 I think it's important, like really, really important to have something to look forward to. And I remember there was uh, Milton Erickson who was a uh, he was kind of like the Bruce Lee of, of Kung, Bruce Lee of Kung Fu, the Bruce Lee of hypnosis. He was, if you were involved in hypnosis, he is like the the king of hypnosis, kind of. There's a, there's others as well, but he's like very famous. And now we've got the ice cream van coming out between rain sessions. don't know how well that picks up on a microphone. I can hear it really loud. Oh, it's stopped now. So, he, he had like three heart attacks and he realized after the third one, well, that's not gonna be what kills me. And he was 80 and so something like that. And, when he passed away, which he eventually did, he had the next, I think, three years planned. He never stopped planning ahead. He always had something to get out of bed for. So he always had something to look forward to. And he'd gone through polio twice. So he had polio when he was a kid and he had polio again or I don't know if it was actually polio but it was like a resurgence of it when he was probably in his 50s and he was told it is what's the, it's quite a powerful story actually he heard the doctor tell his parents and he, I think he was about eight years old at this point that he wouldn't survive um, till the next day so his parents didn't tell him but he heard the doctor say it to his parents and when his mum came into the bedroom to see him he asked if she could move the bed move his bed so he could see out the window because he wanted to see the sunrise. Because if he could see the sunrise, he'd know that he'd survived. That's all he had to do was to reach sunrise, and he know he'd survived the night, and he was going to be okay. That was in his in his mind, and he looked forward to the sunrise. So they moved his bed, probably both of them, both his parents, 
and not only did he see the sunrise, he saw thousands of sunrises. I mean, I could even use my dad as a his story um, as an example of being able to look forward and to not accept maybe what someone else might say. You know, if, if anyone says, I'll oh, give up, then why are they saying that? Sometimes it's our own voices that say it, isn't it? Why are we saying it? So I guess I'm just talking about this. So who knows why I'm talking about it? But my dad, he got, he was in a, a serious car accident when he was in his 20s. So I wasn't, this might have been when I wasn't living with him. No, it might have been before I was born. I, I can't, I'm not sure. But he was basically crushed between two lorries. He was in a mini, a lorry behind him stopped suddenly. He went into the back of the lorry and the, the lorry behind him went in the back of him. So he was crushed basically and the doctor said oh, he'd, he, was, he wouldn't survive it. He survived it, they told his parents. Because my nan told me all about this. The next thing they said, well, if he survives it, he's never going to be able to walk again. Which he did. They said if he walks again, he'll, he'll, he won't be able to work. He'll be... You know what I mean? He'll just be damaged, maybe his brain or whatever. He won't be able to actually physically do much again. That didn't happen. So, and that was that determination. And both my nan and my granddad, my granddad and my man, my, my, my nan and granddad, they were very positive about him recovering. My dad had been in a war, He'd, my granddad had been in a war rather. He'd been in a concentration camp uh, as a prisoner of war because they put them in them places sometimes. And he was put to work, so imagine how horrible that was. And he survived that, so he had the mentality, my grandfather, that pretty much anything is survivable, anything can be overcome, you can overcome anything eventually, you know, it's hard but you can do it and he had that mentality that my dad was going to be okay so they didn't treat him as if he was going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life I mean to start with they said he wouldn't be able to, he'd like he might not get any movement in the whole of his body because he couldn't move his body to start with because he had a broken neck and m multiple other injuries and then bit by bit he was okay he like recovered and my nan and granddad were very positive because they believed that he was going to be okay they my nan was very religious so I think that helped her my granddad was not religious at all but he just believed that my dad would be okay. And they kind of had plans for him. Like, you know, they kind of, what he would do with his life and it wasn't their plans, but they knew what his plans were. And he had plans to be self-employed and he never gave up. And I've heard those kinds of stories about other people where having something to look forward to just seems like really, really important. And it doesn't have to be something big. It doesn't have to be a trip to Disneyland or it doesn't have to be a, a flight to the moon. <laughs> I mean, eventually there will be flights to the moon. 
or flights to space, you know, as a kind of, you can just pay to go. That will be happening soon, probably next few years. I don't know if I'd want to go there though. It doesn't look like there's much there, like in space. I like the idea of maybe looking at the planet from a distance. But I can watch that on YouTube, so maybe I don't need to. The only thing I, I struggle with, how can it be spinning? How can it know the exact speed to spin so that it stays the same? Because when a propeller spins, you can see it still kind of moving, can't you? Like, just, like it's not moving or it's moving very slowly. With the, with the planet, it's like the Earth, it's like it's just static. Yeah, clouds and stuff, but how does it manage to just reach the right speed? It doesn't make sense, does it, really? You think, why are we not all dizzy <laughs> all the time, you know? Strange. Maybe they got it wrong. Maybe the Earth is on top of a big tortoise. It's possible. I closed the window, so it's a bit stuffy in there. I had a visitor. That's not the reason it's stuffy, it's just... I guess having more than one person in here is... taking more, more oxygen than normal. If that's a thing. So, I'm just thinking, what can you look forward to? What can I look forward to? We can like play this little game together. What can we look forward to? And I do wonder about that. It's like, okay. When I had my job in the the last insurance job I had, I cleared my credit card, which I was pleased about. And then... I decided to sign up for a hypnosis course which was due to start in I don't know September I think so this was at the beginning of the year maybe April May time and every time I asked the question do you have any uh, part do you do any do any educational courses are you a student or anything like that? That was part of one of the, the questions on the for the quotation for the car insurance. I'd get a, a happy feeling that I was going to be doing that course. It reminded me of something that I was looking forward to. And I quite liked that feeling. I didn't end, I didn't end up going on the course because I got ill, but that's a different thing. So having something to look forward to. It doesn't have to be... It can be anything. It doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to not be anything. It's just whatever... What do you enjoy doing? What It could be something that you're looking forward to doing tomorrow. Or today. Or in ten minutes. Something that you can plan for a year away, two years away. Because I find that sometimes when I don't have anything or I have not, not necessarily got anything to look forward to. I have a tendency of looking backwards rather than forward. Without having like little signposts in the future, because of course it hasn't happened yet, but there's a signpost for a few boxing nights that are going to be happening one in October, one in December. There's starting a you know, the my degree course, 5th of October. There's these little signposts, and um, then you've got Christmas, that's always a little signpost, and Maybe other little things that I'm planning on doing. 
got my dentist appointment end of October. Yay. <sighs> Doctor's appointment this week. But even those things are still a little... There's a signpost of something that's going to happen. And looking forward to something doesn't mean necessarily getting excited. Just it is just looking forward. It, it's almost a way to say that the future does exist. Or the future will exist. The future will happen. So by planning further ahead which I've started to do for example when I'm 60 I will be finishing my degree course and I will have my second degree and I'll have a first that's my goal but that won't happen until 2030 I know blimey 2030 so that's when that will happen, 2030. And I'm now tinkering with the idea of starting a new martial arts. Not starting a new, not my own style, but starting to go training again. We're in a new club and... Did I just say club? And my new thing is to have that goal of getting a black belt by the time I finish my degree now if I, if I do the I should probably get a black belt within four to five years really but just have that goal to at least by the time I'm 60 have a black belt and you know those people including my own voices in my head would might say you're too old what are you doing starting something so old in life what are you doing taking up a dangerous physical sport when you're so old? You're going to be 60 by the time you're finished. And the amount of people that have asked me, like family and people that I know, like, what are you going to do with the degree? Why are you doing the degree? What are you going to do? You, you know, you'll be 60. You'll be 60 when you get the degree. Well, I'm, I'm doing it because I want to do it, because it, for fun. The same reason, you hear that dog in the background. Sorry about that. I'm not really responsible for the dog. It's not my dog. Vinny is his mum's. So he's, <laughs> I just spoke to her on the phone. Apparently, he's, she's, she's just been doing some washing, so she's folding her clothes up, just come out of the dryer, and he's just grabbing them and pushing them everywhere it's really causing giving a hassle <laughs> uh, I'm going to pick him up when I finish this recording it's currently 25 past 4 p.m. on Tuesday I know trivia Tuesday oh well I've come to the conclusion I can't I struggle to limit myself with doing stuff on different days I'm just going to do stuff whenever I feel like it. I will, apart from Q&A Friday, I'm going to stick to that. And maybe eventually I will become disciplined and adult enough to stick to another day of doing a specific thing. But right now, um, although, yeah, there's, I, I've kind of got a little idea what I'm doing. I'm going to start making weird noise when I breathe like that what was I talking about oh yeah Vinny oh man if you go to the Facebook group Jason Newland's boring group or actually if you go to YouTube as well there's a video of Vinny when he was a baby it's so cute and I've also posted a bunch of pictures that I got it from his mum because that's where he used to live with her until he bit her on the face. <laughs> so she had to give him up because she had uh, little kids around. She had a grandkids and she was worried that he was going to bite them. So, and ironically, today he bit me. Yep. 
He had something, I was outside, and there was something on his tail. It looked to me like it was, I don't know, like a, a flea, not a flea, but like something like that, like a creepy crawly thing. So I just like, oh, wait a minute, I just couldn't, I was, all I was gonna do is just pick it off, make sure it's okay, and just get it off his tail. And it was only outside the top part of his tail as well. Well, he didn't like that, and he snapped at me, and he bit my little finger. He didn't draw blood, but he did kind of pin pierce the skin a little bit, it's a little bit red. And yeah, I was not, not best pleased with that. Uh, I know that he doesn't like his tail touched. I said should know that. He's let me know plenty of times. He doesn't like me touching his feet either. He's quite temperamental, but apparently he's always been like that. He's been very mischievous right from birth. He was an only child. He had eight nipples to choose from when he was being breastfed by his mum. I oh, just pictures of his mum on there as well. She wasn't all red. She was like white and red. And even his dad wasn't all red. So how he managed to be... I know he's got like white feet, white socks and that, but and a bit of a white belly. Has he got a white belly? I can't remember. I should look at him more often. But he... Yeah, he kind of had his he's had his own way a lot. So he's always been treated nicely, which is which is how it should be. But I think he's <sighs> need to figure out some kind of not discipline, probably I don't know what the right word is, some way to get him to behave a bit better. He's, he's usually so good, but occasionally he's, like then, biting me. I mean, I don't hurt. I've never hurt him. I've never, never would. So what does he think I'm going to do by just touching his tail? It's not like, I've not like pulled his tail as a joke and he didn't like it. And he, you know, it's not, unless that did happen because he was around little kids when he was a baby. So maybe they were pulling him by the tail and he didn't like it. Maybe they were swinging him around. <laughs> you don't know with little kids, do you? So may, maybe that's something that you don't like. But that video has got, a, it's got actually got a baby crying because there was a baby at the time in the house. And whenever we play the video, there's a the sound of the child um, cry, um, crying. Vinny goes nutty, starts barking. He recognises that sound. If I played a baby crying on YouTube, he wouldn't take any notice. But he recognised that sound. So he he was born in that house and he spent the first probably couple of months of his life there. Or however long before he was able to be sold on to someone else. So he got sold to a lady in Kent and then she got unwell she gave it him back to the people that bred him and that man's mother-in-law is my friend, my neighbour she took him on it was only temporarily really but then she, because she'd known him all his life kind of wanted to I think she was going to keep him and then you know I think she was eating chicken he was trying to, she, she wouldn't give him any of his chicken. Well, not his chicken, her chicken. And he bit her on the face. So, yeah. I mean, if I'd have known that, I probably wouldn't have had him, to be fair. Because if he ever bit me on the face, I wouldn't, I couldn't keep him after that. I don't think, I think that's, that's a, that's a line I'm not a big fan of being bitten on the face by anyone. That would be, probably be my line. Um, but I've eaten in front of him and he's begged and stuff and he's never... But when I first got him, he used to, he was like growling at me. And I just put my face right next to his face, like, come on. And he backed down. So I think he knows who's in charge. 
But blimey, bit my finger though. God, it's my little finger. And it's right on where I used to have a dog bite from years ago. About 2000 and probably 2008. I had, uh, I was delivering leaflets for my website basically and uh, dog just put it just put a loop it was one of those really hard letter boxes i couldn't and i had to push my fingers all the way through and it basically ripped the end of my little finger off and yeah they said oh we're gonna have to you're probably gonna need plastic surgery and i just laughed at them i said come on it's my little finger if i'm gonna have plastic surgery my little finger is like not even in the top 20 of that list and he laughed it's like I mean let's face it's just a thing I don't care what it looks like as long as it's they thought it was broken to start with but it, it I'm not sure if it was broken as well it might have been but it was definitely uh, mangled <laughs> but the nail grew back it's weird it's like there was no nail but it grew back out of nowhere I think I just regenerated it so yeah I've just been wondering about having something to look forward to because it seems to it can help to get through stuff help to which you know that when some people say oh uh, you know, uh, like they can't see a future and they don't, and that that's that's a problem. Is I know technically it's imagination, but so is negativity. So being positive about the future is the same process as, as being negative about it. It's the same process. It's just you using your imagination to think of things that you want to happen as opposed to focusing on things you don't want to happen and I know of which I speak because I spent decades I guess doing both to be honest still do sometimes and I realised over the years that we are affected by both we can be affected by both. So if you're going to do it, why not think about something that you are looking forward to doing? That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. What do you reckon? I mean, even like... I mean, my dad, he had a massive... He had to, he had to have a, a tumour removed from his neck when we was... I was about 12 and it was in a really it was non-malignant that wasn't an issue but it was still growing but it was in a really really dangerous place so i didn't know my dad was going to be the star of this recording so he had to have a really major operation to have it removed and all he was thinking about was after the operation The idea of it being a problem didn't even come into his mind, I don't think. It might have done, but he didn't mention it. My stepmom, on the other hand, told me that he might die, which was like, why would you tell that to a kid? But as so I was at school, praying, literally, while he was in hospital, having it done. But he was positive. He was like, he's like, okay, we've done this. Um, we'll go on holiday when it's when I've recovered, and cause it took him about six weeks or two months to recover from the operation. I think enough to sort of go back to work and that. And he was self-employed, so that was that's probably ex super rough on him, to be honest, financially. I'd have offered him some of my uh, paper paper round money, but I didn't want to. I wanted it for myself. <laughs> I had chocolate to buy. So, 
he had things to look forward to. And I remember, I do remember that even when I was a kid, no matter how difficult things was at times, I needed something to look forward to. And I'd, I'd honestly, I'd, I'd grip at anything that might give me that little bit of, oh, good, looking forward to that. Whether it was a television show, whether it was seeing a girl that I liked at school, whether it was, oh, we have pizza, we have pizza for dinner, or there's a movie, we'll have, we get, you know, we get some videos from the video shop at the weekend. Just anything that I could try and hold on to, to look forward to, just to get me through the period. Because I was, I would say, I'm bipolar or whatever all my life. Like, as a child, I was in and out of um, moods, like serious mood swings when I was a kid. But I didn't tell anyone. I had to kind of pretend to be okay. But I didn't pull it off very well because I'd be very grumpy and then other times I'd be completely the opposite, you know. When I was in a good, good mood, I didn't need anything to look forward to. I didn't think I did. But I think it's needed all the time. Something... And the good thing about it is that you can be as creative as you want with it. That's what I like because I can imagine when I'm 60 traveling the world. I perhaps don't know if I'll be able to do that at the moment. But when I finish my degree course, when I'm a black belt, maybe I'll travel around. It's only six years away. And if I do train, I might be fitter than I am now when I'm 60. I won't be any sexier because who could get sexier than me? I love saying that. It's, it's just so silly. Makes me laugh. <laughs> See? Um, sex. Still can't believe I had someone once tell me on YouTube, you really think you're sexy, don't you? Like, no, it's sarcasm, irony, it's humour, it's just me being silly. It's the fact that I'm not, that's why I'm saying I am. Ugh. So I'm thinking, because you know, we could do these, uh, what you're grateful for. That's a hugely important thing as well. Something that we're grateful for. But I think just as important, equally as important, if not more important even sometimes, would be what are you looking forward to? And it's not about, as I said before, it's not just about what you're excited about, what's going to happen in the future. What are you looking forward? What, what are you looking? What, how are you seeing your future? Are you seeing your future where your youngest child is going to prom, prom night? when she's 16 or he's 16, 15, whatever year age that is, or leaving university and you go to their graduation when they're 20 or 21. Can you imagine maybe giving your child or your grandchild even, going to your grandchild's graduation, maybe taking your grandchild to school? seeing your grandchild for the first time even though your child now might only be three or four years old but just thinking about that in the future those wonderful experiences that haven't happened yet and will be just whether it happens or not it's not important whether you have grandchildren it's not it's not relevant it's a fact that you can see that that might happen you're looking into the future and you can see a future 
and you can start to map it out. And because it hasn't happened yet, you can choose what happens. And then when you get there, it doesn't happen. It doesn't matter if it doesn't all happen exactly how you want. That's not really the point. The point is that you've got something to aim for. It's the, there's an old adage, isn't there, that if you you'll never hit a bullseye of a dartboard if you don't aim at the dartboard. You know, if you aim a different, if you don't focus on where you're chucking the dart, you may never hit the dart, the the, the hole in one. Hole in one? That's golf, isn't it? Blimey. You might never hit the the, the bullseye or the triple twenty. But you will eventually. If you chuck you chuck enough times you're gonna hit the bullseye anyway. Just a, it's a numbers game for that, but st- skillfully you might not be able to manipulate it right to get it there. But guaranteed, if you face the other way, and all you're doing is looking in a different direction, and you throw the darts there, you're never going to hit the door, the dartboard ever, unless the darts <laughs> are really light. And it's a big gush of wind and blows them back into the dartboard. But yeah, outside of that kind of scenario. Or there's actually metal in the dart in the dart, and just as you chuck it, you put you've got a big generated um magnet behind the dartboard, so it pulls everything that's metal towards it, so your dart might go that way. But outside of that situation Unless, <laughs> no, but so you kind of have to focus by focusing on something. It doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get there, but it's going to get somewhere near there. You can focus on the bullseye. It might go in the double eight. It might go in the treble five. It might go in the nine, but it's going to go. It might go on the outside of the dartboard might go in the black bits where or might hit the the metal bits and just bounce off but it's going to be near the bullseye it's going to be in that vicinity so you can imagine yourself winning the lottery or driving a really beautiful car in the future or maybe imagine giving your your three-year-old child or four-year-old child now giving them driving lessons in 15 years time you can imagine what kind of car it is that you're giving them driving lessons in it doesn't mean that it will be the exact car might not be that color they might they might want a different colored car but you still be doing a driving lessons maybe there won't be driving lessons by then it doesn't matter because it might be a case of you sit in the car with them and you say, well, you need to you need to still keep an eye out for stuff, you know, even though it's all self-driven. But, you know, this is how you operate the thing. You need to speak to it like this and you need to. So he's still going to be involved in that. Is this the weirdest recording I've ever done? <laughs> it might be. I don't mind. So what what are you looking forward to? That's what this recording's about. What are you looking forward to? So I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to. I've kind of already told you, really. So for me, it's little things. I look forward every day, and this might sound a bit strange, I look forward to waking up in the morning to edit my recording, but also just to see if I had any, how many recordings, how many downloads rather have I had. I look forward to, it's on a day-to-day basis, look forward to hopefully creating a recording, which I don't, can't always manage, but I try to record something. It might be a movie that I look forward to watching, like at the moment, I'm looking forward to watching Deadpool 3. 
that's a movie I'm looking forward to watching. But then we're going into the future. I'm looking forward to, as I said earlier, some boxing events, which takes us up to the end of the year. There's a few. So I'm looking forward to those. I'm looking forward to, again, it's not just things that I'm excited about. It's also things that are going to happen as well. So I'm looking forward to the doctor's appointment. But I'm looking forward. And that's where the doctor's appointment is in the future. So I'm not looking forward to it like, yeah. And especially with the dentist appointment at the end of next month. I'm not thinking, oh, I'm counting the days. Because, you know, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of having things in my mouth. Well, it depends what they are. But, you know, just generally, uh, you know, I think dentist I'm not that bothered but and as far as I know my teeth are okay the most that's going to happen is a filling or two I don't know but that is it there's no major no major things going on that I can tell from my teeth but I'm looking forward to that because that's the literal term of looking forward I know uh, maybe that is where you are, but in this country, we say we're looking forward to something. It's like we're excited. We're filled with enthusiasm uh, about this event that will be coming up. We're looking forward to it. But I want to, I guess I want to be maybe pedantic or literal with the meaning of the sentence, which is looking forward as opposed to looking backward. So not looking into the past or looking at the past, but looking into the future and planning the future. It's almost like we're planting these little trees that when we get there, they will be nice and big and strong. So we're kind of planning our future. And in a way we do that anyway. You know, people that are, maybe they've got pensions or they've got stocks and bonds and things like that. Or uh, maybe insurance policies. Like I'm thinking like financially, some people, a lot of people plan ahead so that when they retire or when they reach a certain age, they can then enjoy the retirement that they deserve because they've made that happen. And even if they're not going to, they might not even be having enough money to do all the things they want to do, but they're still looking forward because that's the future, isn't it? You can't look back at the future. Oh dear, we're going into movie territory now. So when I think about the future, I think about what am I looking for? forward to as opposed to what am I excited about so when I look forward I don't I think the thing is whatever emotion we give to something that's going to happen in the future is our own feelings we've added because it hasn't happened yet so we can decide in our minds how it works out how it turns out how we experience it how it's going to be for us because it hasn't happened yet it's as simple as that so if you've got a plan and you've got to choose an emotion why not just choose a nice one a nice feeling a positive emotion to connect it to that event in the future so let's say you've got you know if you think about your grandchild being born in 10 15 20 years time whatever it is a year's time two years time 
you imagine you're going to imagine your grandchild being born healthy and your daughter or your your stepdaughter or daughter-in-law or whatever being healthy as well and everyone being healthy and happy because that's the only way to do it there is no other way really to to plan stuff like that I mean, it's not even just being positive, it's how else are we supposed to look to the future unless we put a positive slant on it to make it happy? Because you're creating it yourself. And also, however we think about the future will affect how the future is in the same way as... I remember, oh blimey, I used to have this issue with someone that I used to see in a shop. And I just didn't didn't like him, it seemed like he didn't like me. And I didn't like going in there because he was, I don't know, something just wasn't rude, rude, but just not friendly. And my friend said to me, with that person in the shop because he got on really well with him he said you know he's uh, he's a big fan of boxing I said really? he said yeah so I, f I just we, me and him didn't get on well I went in there my friend came in with me and I started talking to him about boxing we get on like best friends now. This is like two or three years ago. But we get on really well. I haven't even got, I've got his number on my phone. Because we talked about boxing, we had something in common. And that broke right through. That whatever that coldness was. Whatever that, there was something there. Neither of us just connected with each other. And I was seeing him like every day. And it then suddenly, talk about boxing. And the way I viewed him was different. The way he viewed me, I imagine, was different. I've never talked to him about it, to be honest. And it was so easy. I could have just kept that up for the next... The last three or four years, just going in there, never speaking to him and just getting what I needed to get, feeling that he was being rude to me, when actually he probably wasn't. My, my, my mood or my thinking seemed to be affecting how he was acting towards me. My, maybe my behaviour, my body language, my the way I was speaking to him maybe wasn't friendly and I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, I wasn't, you know. But I can't talk about boxing without really being kind of infused because it's the thing that I'm really into. So I could talk to a complete stranger about boxing and get on with them as well as my best bestest friend in the whole wide world because I'm talking about something that interests me and something that I have a little bit of knowledge about so in the same way that when we start thinking about the future our attitude my attitude, your attitude will affect if our attitude affects interactions that we have or had in the past presently they're going to affect interactions in the future so then we can just decide to fine tune or make changes or imagine that things are going to go really well 
And I've done it a few times when, God, do I, I do sound a bit monotonous, don't I? Monotone us. Job interviews is one of those things. I've always, I've been quite good in job interviews over the years. Not all, not all job interviews, but some. And I can get into that mindset where I rehearse in my mind beforehand. And I just believe it's going to go well. And when I, when I feel that way, it's always gone well. Always. And when I have that in the past, I've had feelings about the future, and it just felt like it's going to be good. And generally it is. And I've been amazed at how often my attitude or my mood has really affected my experience. When I could be doing exactly the same thing and the experience is different two days in a row, but I'm doing exactly the same thing, but just in a different mood. It reminds me of this, this comedian called Earl Oaken. And he was, he looked like Roy Orbison. Seriously, he looked like Roy Orbison. And he would sing like bluesy songs, but they were funny. And he was a big name on the circuit. And I saw him on a Friday and Saturday night at the comedy club I was at. And I honestly, I've never, I've seen it a couple of times. This happened a couple of times, but this was the worst one ever. Right, the Friday night, he went on stage, sat down, and people were literally chucking things at him. He got booed off the screen, off the stage. He was the headliner. He was he was the, a big name on the circuit, and he got booed off. And they were literally chucking, chucking stuff, which I don't feel I've ever seen ever the whole time I was there. And I've seen thousands of gigs. It's very rare you see people chucking stuff on stage. And I actually thought, even though I knew that he was a good comedian, well, he was better than good. He was one of the, it was a top comedian. I thought, oh, maybe, oh. Uh. And I was watching it thinking, this is rubbish. I'll be honest. I thought he didn't say one funny thing. Not one thing did he do that was funny. Uh, and I was with the audience. I didn't chuck anything, obviously. But I thought he was awful. I thought, why they got him as a headliner? Absolutely. Really, really bad. And he turned up on a Saturday night to do his next gig, like... I couldn't believe, like, why have you got him back? And he said, well, he's contracted, that's, that's, that's it. He's contracted for, we have had to, it took us six months to get, he's, you know, he's on a waiting list of six months to get him here. So he's contracted for Friday and Saturday night. And I said, are you going to have him back again? He said, probably not, after last night. So he goes on stage. I swear word for word movement everything was the same the way he tuned his guitar the way he made his mouth expression the way he moved his glasses the even where he looked everything the tone of voice the wording it was almost word for word exactly what he did on Friday the night before and it's probably one of the best performances I've ever seen. And the audience were giving to him like a standing ovation, which is another thing you don't see that often in like a comedy club. You know, it's not like a theatre or anything. It's like a comedy club, a lot of drunk people, and it's just, you know, they get lots of clapping, but to actually have a standing ovation. Now, I would exaggerate and say no chucking flowers on the stage, but that didn't... <laughs> 
<laughs> that didn't happen. But I, honestly, I got a straight, like word for word, everything was the same that he did. The audience loved him and I loved him. And it's weird because I would say part of the reason the Friday audience didn't like him because they decided right at the start. And they affected each other. The audience affected each other. That energy spread, that negative energy, whatever it was. He did exactly the same thing both nights. And I'd seen him afterwards as well. And he, it's, I'm not saying he always did the same thing. He was very funny. But on this occasion, he knew it was going to be two different audiences. People didn't go back there on a Friday and a Saturday night. So different people, I mean, different audiences. So we were all affecting each other. So that negativity that was in the room on a Friday was spreading, even spread to me. And, I, you know, many times I've laughed at a comedian where the audience hated them. You know, I tried to like, I don't care what the audience are doing. Uh, I would get carried away with the audience. Well, sometimes I see the audience laughing and I think, why are they laughing? Even this, that situation. But on this occasion, the negativity was so strong that it spread to me and I could... Like, I was with the audience. This is this is awful. On a Saturday night, I couldn't stop laughing. And it was one of those really weird experiences that I still can't really explain, not really, other than attitude. Expectation, maybe. But I expected him to be rubbish again on a Saturday before we went on stage I was expecting the worst but the audience weren't when he got on stage they were laughing straight away before he even sat down so even expectation my expectation didn't affect how I experienced him because the day before I was expecting him to be brilliant and I think I was probably laughing before we sat down. And then it went downwards from there. But he believed himself. He knew that it worked. And I'm not 100% sure why I'm telling this story. It just came into my mind, just the memory. But that ability to be affected by others is worth watching out for sometimes. Especially when it comes to other people's negativity. Because it's not necessary. They can keep that. Other people's positivity. You can sail on top of that stuff. You know, positivity is like a huge, huge boat where everyone can get on. You know, it's big enough for the whole world to, like, travel across the ocean on. Negativity. That's like just having bricks tied to your ankles, but individually. You know, you fall in with all the other negative people, but you end up going to the bottom of the ocean on your own. So positivity brings people together negative it just tears people apart put it this way if you was about to have an operation which I've had two operations in my life may have more in the future who knows what would you prefer the doctor to come in saying everything's going to be great done this a million times even even if they were almost not giving you the sympathy that maybe you think you deserve because 
I like a little bit of sympathy sometimes. But if the doctor's like really positive, it's going to be fine. I've done this operation thousands of times. It's routine. We'll remove what we need to remove and you'll go on your merry way and you're going to be fine. If you need some more treatment, you'll have some more treatment and you're going to be fine. There are hundreds and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people around the world have gone through this and they've come out the other end absolutely fine. And the ones that come out the best are the ones that are most positive and they have something planned for the future and they're looking forward to the future, not, not just in an excited way, but actually have those flags planted or those trees maybe in the future so you can look ahead and you can see stuff that's going to happen even outside of your own life for example there will be a general election in this country my country the one i own in five years time so that will be 29 19 no 2029 wrong century sorry 2029 there'll be another general election if they don't call one earlier that is they won't call one earlier guaranteed there'll be another general election in america in 2029 so these are things that are pretty much guaranteed you know, it's something that's just going to happen. There's other things that are going to happen that we can look forward to. We know that there's going to be space travel. We know that there's going to be, one day there's going to be a human being on Mars. It will happen. Whether we believe it or not, it's going to happen. One day, all the cars on the road will be automated we won't need to drive them that is going to happen it's not it's not even questioned so it's interesting like so you've got these things that are going to happen we don't necessarily know when but we know they're going to happen like you know it's going to rain it might be the sunniest day in history right now but you know at some point in the future it's going to rain it's going to be windy. It's going to snow at some point in the future. I guess depending on where you live in the world. But, you know, generally if you're in the Western world, it's going to rain and snow. It's going to be cold. It's going to be hot. You're going to eat. You're going to have to go to the toilet. All those things are going to happen in the future. Hundreds, thousands of times. Thousands of poos and wees. I mean, I'm not saying fill your future with lots of poos and wees. Don't like have lots of poos on the floor and stuff like that in the future. Because that, that would be... Uh, yeah. Follow the, follow the brown poo road. Follow the brown poo road. Oh, 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 oh. You know, maybe not, but... This stuff is just inevitable going to happen. So you've got these things. If you've got a child, that child is going to go to high school, secondary school, whatever you call it, when they're 12, 11. And then they're going to leave school. And then one day they're going to be in a relationship with someone, a romantic relationship. It's just these things that are, uh, just happen. Inevitable happens. So there's things you can look forward to. And because you know it's going to happen. Doesn't mean you've got to be all excited about it. But why not? Why not Like start to imagine what kind of house your daughter or your son are going to look on their graduation day or how's your how your child going to look um, on prom night with their tuxedo or whatever they wear these days 
I never had a prom night when I was a kid. They have them here now. Never used to, but it's, uh, they have them in this country too. So there's certain things that are going to happen every year. Halloween, um, Christmas, Easter, or whatever the holiday that you celebrate there is. Ramadan, um, Diwali, um, what's the one at Christmas? The other one, I forget. There's, two, there's so many, lots and lots of different festivals and things, but wherever you're coming from, whatever your belief system is, there are things to look forward to. And again, it's not necessarily about being excited. It's about looking forward. There's something there. Like, you've got a bridge. You don't cross a bridge unless the bridge leads somewhere. You wouldn't walk on a bridge that just had no, didn't go anywhere. You know, it has to connect where you are to where you're going. And we cross many, many bridges along the way. And you can always see in front of you. You might not be able to see far, far, far in front. But maybe with a telescope you could look and start to plan with your imagination. What your future is going to be. And even if it doesn't turn out that way, that's not really the point. It's not about imagining something and every single minute detail being correct. It's not, that's not really what this is about. It's about seeing a future or imagining a future, hearing a future maybe, experiencing it, feeling it, inside knowing that it's there that actually there's so much so many wonderful things are going to happen there's going to be some rubbish things as well obviously but so many really lovely things a positive always outweighs anything else And I understand it's human nature to, you know, go to, a, they might have the, the most amazing wedding and, you know, have the most amazing dinner and and then a glass of red wine spills over maybe the bride. And therefore, there could be that mentality of like, it's ruined, the wedding's ruined. Well, it hasn't ruined the wedding. Might ruin the way you were thinking, but in reality, you just spent the whole day having fun and being happy, maybe happier than you've ever been in your life. And you will let a glass of red wine spoil that. Come on. There is a, remember this lady, there is a story and she, oh, she was always moaning, always moan, right, always complaining, rather, I would say the word moaning, always complaining about her husband and, oh, you're so messy, you're so messy, you're always leaving stuff around. And he was in a car accident. And he never returned home. And she'd be sitting at home. Not wishing that he was still alive. But wishing that the house was still messy. So she wanted the house to be messy again. Because that would mean that he'd still be there with her. So these little things that bug us as well as like, well, if you take it to the extreme situation, the way that your husband or your wife 
drinks a cup of tea. Maybe they slurp too much. I've got a friend who can't stand seeing her husband eat a yogurt. <laughs> it's just little things. I understand. I do get it that things can be annoying. Trust me, I've annoyed enough people to know. Devoted my life to annoying people. <laughs> I haven't really. Just the first 35 years. So, but imagine that person's gone. What you? What wouldn't you give to see them slurping that tea, making that weird noise? And maybe the relationship's over or whatever. For whatever reason, they're not there anymore. So I guess it's not just looking forward to the future. It's also appreciating now, appreciating the present. What did I record in once? I called it, the present is a present and the future is a gift. I was very proud with that, with that title of a recording I did. And then I think I just talked about tennis for about an hour. So anyway, it was a good title. I don't, I've never talked about tennis for a whole hour. I wouldn't even know how to. I know so little about tennis. I mean, you could argue I know so little about anything, which is a good argument, but I don't mind. Because it don't matter too much. I've noticed, though, there was a thing. I've, so things that have changed. There was a time when if a neighbour had loud music, I would lose it. I'm talking like anger on a level that is not even natural. Now I can lay in bed, like now I can lay in bed and I can have loud music coming from three different places and I don't care. I get, I get a little bit, if it's disturbing the recording, I do get a little bit, oh, turn it down. But I'm not angry. I'm not like emotionally affected by it anymore and it can't affect me and the only way I could get to that point is by getting to a point where I nearly did something really really bad and luckily I didn't I'm not going to go into it but I nearly um, showed my anger towards the people but I didn't and I'm grateful for that, so grateful. And now it just doesn't really bother me anymore. Because it's not important. If it was 24 hours a day, yeah, I'd have something to say. But every now and then, a bit of loud music, oh well. But back then... I wasn't thinking of the future either. I just didn't have... There was a period when I had nothing to look forward to. And I really believed there was nothing... In the future. But there was. And knowing that there is... I mean... When you started listening to this... And now... This is now the future compared to back then. Wow! Mind-blowing! <laughs> I've changed your world, I know! But seriously, it's, it is, tomorrow is the future. The day after. I know some people say, take each day as it comes. And I understand if, if someone's coming from a negative perspective, if they're going to be in their mind preparing for the next day to be as awful as today's been, then yeah, then just focus on today. But if you're going to plan tomorrow to be a better day. Because that's a good thing about healing, isn't it? We all heal. So if you had an operation or you're having treatment, you're going to heal. You're going to get better. And every day can be a, a step forward towards full recovery. Where 
maybe you feel even better than you did before. And something that can help that recovery is thinking about those things that you're looking forward to in the future. Those things, and it doesn't have to be a big thing. I mean, sometimes for me, I just, I look forward to, I'm trying to think of something I look forward to doing. And maybe going to the pet shop to get Vinny a treat. Or watching a movie, like I said earlier. Or perhaps just seeing the stats in the morning. Seeing if I've had any if I've had any people view my videos on YouTube. Just little things like that. So that's kind of looking forward in the short term. In the long term. There's things I'm looking forward to. There's things I'd like to do in the future. And I plan in my mind, plant these seeds, which I did many years ago with this whole thing I'm doing, my plan was to reach a large audience. At one point I did have a fairly large audience. It's an okay audience, it's not a huge audience, but it's still, it's growing, it's always growing. And To make a difference. And although I don't get much feedback. I've had enough feedback. From people telling me that I have. In fact. Indeed. Made a difference. And that I haven't just been. Wasting the last. 18 years of my life. And that means something to me. Because I pl I planted those seeds in the future. The seeds of maybe feeling confident making these recordings. To one day, going back in the past, to, to one day being able to find my voice. To be able to just talk naturally. And still be able to make a difference without trying to, you know, without planning what I'm going to say. Or without having a particular agenda or to just be able to one day tap into a sense, a feeling of positivity and I'm going to use the word healing but something where my words can have a positive effect and can help you to move forward in a way that is useful for you because you've got the choice how you live your life And you can choose what you decide to look forward to. I mean, ultimately, we all decide every second of every day what we say next, what we do next, how we feel. We can control, we can decide how we feel about something. We don't have to just be reactive. For those that are, I'm, I'm reactive sometimes. But sometimes I just think, well, huh. the, you know, I'm not that that worried. Even when Vinny bit me, in the initial moment, ooh, <laughs> I won't even tell you how I felt. But it dawned on me after a little while that I was didn't really care that much, actually. I knew that he didn't like having his tail touched. I touched his tail anyway. He let me know plenty of times in the past not to touch his tail. And 
put it this way, if he wanted to bite me hard, he would have done. That was a warning shot. <laughs> well, he did the warning shot, first of all, when he growled. And I ignored him and I went back for more. And that's when he nipped me. But I felt his grip when he's got a hold of a ball or something and he don't, don't let it go. So he wasn't, you know, he's got a tight grip on him. So I could literally be sitting there and he's still attached to my finger. <laughs> but he's not. Although I probably wouldn't be doing a podcast. I'd probably be asking for help. I don't know how I'd do that though. Yeah, I need an ambulance. Why? There's a dog attached to my finger. Can you make... I don't know how it would work. I suppose I could just take him to hospital with me. I say, what's wrong? What How can I help you? Yeah, I need this human removed from my mouth. Oh. So that's it, really. I need to go and pick up Vinny from... I said I'd be picking him up at 7. No, 5 o'clock. It's now half past 5. I wonder if I'm in trouble. Let's see if she's texted me. Have you got any black bin bags? Oh, shut up. Black bin bags. Always after stuff. Okay, I'll take one. Take some round to her. Um, yeah, so... What you could do... If you wanted to, I mean, you might be thinking about things that you can plan for the future, things to look forward to. I've done that in the past. So I've got a piece of paper and I just made it look like a map. Sometimes I've even kind of drawn a pathway, a little bit like the yellow brick road kind of thing, and then just signposted what's going to be happening along the way. The good thing is, it's, it's a bit like those, remember, I suppose they have them in computer games, but there's those old books that weren't old when I was a kid. But they you could read them and then you could basically choose, it. so go to page 74, if you think this is going to happen or if you think this is going to happen, and you go to whichever page you think that's going to happen, so it'd be a different adventure. Uh and it's kind of like that, whatever, however we choose. Because, you know, I got my friend said to me, oh, what is it? She, what did she say? Oh, yeah, it's all, a, we were talking about childhood and stuff. And she's saying, oh, it's all the bad things that have shaped how I am. And it has such an effect. I said, but isn't it interesting? Because we were talking about childhood and stuff. It's interesting, how often do we say that about the good things that have happened in our lives? Because we've all had really, really good things. All of us have had good experiences, positive experiences. We've all been helped. I'm saying all, I know I'm generalizing, but I've never met anyone that hasn't been helped. Whether they admit it or not, whether they ex uh, acknowledge it or not. And that has had a big effect on our lives as well, hasn't it? So I sometimes wonder how would it be if we spent a bit of time every day? Because I do this, I don't do it for that reason, but I got this thing about gratitude as far as who's helped me? Who would I like to thank? And I don't thank them personally unless I still have contact with them. So my friend Noel phoned me up the other day. And every time I speak to him, because he's off traveling the world and he's he's got a yacht and he retired and he used to own a comedy club. And he, every time I speak to him, before he goes, I thank him. And he always makes a joke like, you know, like tries to turn it into a joke but, but I said no listen, listen thank you if it wasn't for you you know you changed my life if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now you know you you transformed my life and and I said I want you to know this 
I mean, he's my dad's age now, and he's probably 20 years healthier than I am, to be fair. He's probably about about 40-year-old health-wise. But he's... It's just important to thank him. I want to thank my dad. I want to... But it's just sometimes it, it's a little bit harder, maybe... But I do, you know, I want to, I think it's like, at least I think it in my mind. And there's people in the past that have helped me. And so many years of thinking about the things that maybe they did that weren't good. And now be able to focus on some of the good things that they did. And actually that they perhaps really did mean well. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go. So that's me. That's a let me boy to sleep. A little bit different from normal. So I will be back again tomorrow. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. And I probably won't be quite as serious tomorrow. I don't know. We'll just go. If I'm in this mood, that's what I'll do. If I'm not, then I won't. I'll just do whatever mood I'm in. And hopefully it's useful. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Remember to be gentle with yourself. And what have you got to look forward to? What can you create in your mind to look forward to? Lots of love. Bye.